There's a sicha of the Rebbe. There's a sicha parshas nosoi. And you found it yesterday. People found it. And to put it up, it's it's a bit long. I don't think we'll we'll finish it, but there's very good points, beautiful points over here. This was said parshas nosoi yud beit sivan. Tavshin Nun Aleph, 1991. And the Rebbe, if you remember what the Rebbe said, the Rebbe said that the Shabbat, which comes after Shavuot, brings a completion to Shavuot. Shavuot is when we receive the Torah. And of course, the whole idea of the Torah is to constantly raise up and learn more and do more, understand more, and be more and more refined. And Shabbat is exactly the same thing. It brings completion, wholesomeness, holiness, godliness into the creation. And it elevates everything in the creation, even the giving of the Torah. So that's what is represented by, that's the inner meaning of Shabbat coming after the giving of the Torah, the Shabbat after the giving of the Torah. And especially because the whole idea of the Torah is to be in the world, bringing it into the world. So the Shabbat after the giving of the Torah is how the Torah comes into the world and Shabbat brings complete, completeness, wholesomeness. Bira Inyan, explanation. Allah Pasuk, do we have this mind? Can, we, can you maybe find it? Is it possible? Parshas Nasai, Tav Shin Nun Aleph. All right. Bireyan, the explanation is like this. Allah Pasuk on the Pasuk when it says Bakhurish Ashlishi Bayomaze Bo Midbar Sinai. It says on the third month the Jewish people came into Mount Sinai. This is how the the reading of the Torah reading on Shvuot begins. Bakhurish Ashlishi it says, on that day, the Jewish people came into the desert Sinai. The first Rashi, Rashi says, It could have said, on that day. What does it say, on this day? Why does it say in the Torah, on this day, the Jews came into Egypt? It should have said, on that day. Why does it say, on that day? That the words of the Torah should be brand new in your eyes as though they were given today. Hezbrill says, what does this mean? Shekain he metzius bemis. I mean, how can the Torah be brand new in your eyes? The Torah was given 3,000, what is it, 332 years ago. And it's not new. So you have to make believe that it's true, right? They should be, says the Rebbe, no, it's not so. The fact is, Shebekal Yom, that every day, Mitchadesh Enyan Amat and Torah, every day is made anew, this whole idea of the giving of the Torah by means of God. Like the blessing we say when we get called up to the Torah, that God gives the Torah. And we make the blessings in the morning also. That He gives the Torah. Like it says, how much more so, like the creation. Remember learning that mime? That's the last mime we learned. Anochi. We asked the question, remember, do you remember? Anochi, we asked the question, why God created, began the Ten Commandments with 
taking us out of Egypt. I am God that took you out of Egypt. He should have began the Ten Commandments with I, with, I am God that creates heavens and the earth. It's a bigger miracle. It's a deeper miracle. It's a constant miracle. Says the Rebbe, the fact is that the, the creation of the heavens and the earth is something like the giving of the Torah. Just like God creates the heaven and the earth constantly. Like it says, like we say that God renews constantly with his goodness the whole creation. How much more so how much more so in regarding the Torah. Cave, and that since the creation of the world is by means of the Torah, like it says, that God looks in the Torah and he creates the world as also the same thing. The beginning, the renaming of the world has to be by means of the Torah. And by means of making the Torah, seeing that the Torah is always brand new, by means of this, we can see that the world is brand new. That was in the last Mimer that we learned. Right? By means of learning the Torah properly, we see the greatness of the creation, constancy of the creation. Kololos is chadshus now in Torah, this whole idea of the novelty, the giving of the Torah constantly, I'll call it Shana, this is when, when do we get the power to do this, to see every day the Torah is brand new? When? On Shavuos, the time when the Torah was given. This general giving of the Torah brand new on Shavuot every year, this gives us the power to see every day that God is giving us the Torah brand new. And believe it or not, the whole existence of the world depends on the Torah. So when we see that the Torah is brand new, we can start to see that the world is brand new. We'll never be bored again. Just like the renewal of the creation. That in the beginning of the year, Rosh Hashanah, the whole creation is made brand new. And this gives us the power to see it every day. And this is drawn down every day. <clears throat> so on Rosh Hashanah, God created the physical world. And, and the, the and, uh, Matan Torah, this is the power to see the Jewish world, to make the world a Jewish place. Brand new every day. And he's then moving for under, this we can understand. Also regarding... He touches the Torah, how the Torah should be brand new to everybody all the time. <speaking in Hebrew> the Torah should be brand new in your eyes. <speaking in Hebrew> As though they were given every day. <speaking in Hebrew> that the learning of the Torah yeah, should be with chayut v'tainuk, with life and pleasure. And of course you have to understand the Torah. You have to understand, it's not like eating a candy or a piece of cake or something, that you get a pleasure out of it, even though you don't understand anything. But the real fact of the matter is, is also with a candy and all these other things, it's also based on understanding. Maybe not for a little child, but if somebody tells you, listen, candies are bad for you, they give you stomach aches and they rot your teeth out and the sugar makes you crazy, and such, then you don't enjoy it anymore because of what you understand. And understanding something gives you more enjoyment in that thing when you understand it. <clears throat> now the Torah is pure understanding. The whole thing of the Torah is pure understanding. So the idea that the Torah is godliness, that gives us pleasure. But when, under, and when you get the idea that understanding the Torah is also a commandment of God, and then you look at the understanding in a different way. It's not that you're understanding for yourself to conquer the Torah. You're getting the Torah Inside of you, you want the Torah to conquer you. Is that's what's called chayus and pleasure of the Torah. Lo ye The Torah should not be like an old letter. Ela kachadashat should be brand new. That everyone runs to read it. Shenatinat koach itchadshes a chayus. That this renewal of life in the Torah every day, this comes from the renewal of life in the Torah. In the time of Matan Torah, this gives us, Shavuos gives us the, play, the power to see the newness, the freshness, the amazing miracle of the Torah every day. Okay, this is the thing, of course, you have to work on. When the Jews got the Torah on Mount Sinai, so they didn't, uh, they, 
didn't have to work at all. It was just a gift from above. But we see that they also didn't appreciate it. We see that they didn't appreciate it. They went against the Torah. They worshipped the golden calf. Exactly what that, they were constantly complaining. The Jews didn't really appreciate the godliness of the Torah. Our generation is supposed to be the generation that fixes all of that up. That we're going to change all that. And that's what the Rebbe is giving us the advice how to do, to see the miraculousness, what an amazing gift it is that we have the Torah and we can understand the Torah. Gimel. Tzorech Lahavim, we have to understand, Tochan, Chazos, exactly what is this renewal of the Torah all the time and how is this stressed in the Shabbat that's after the giving of the Torah. Parsha's Nasai. Now we said before that what does the word Nasai mean? It means to elevate, lift up. So that's what everybody needs is to be lifted up a little bit, to get a little bit of a, how do you say, a perk. Al-Piyamor, what we said before, so there's two things that occurred when the Torah was given. Number one, Kalalot Yitchadjit the Matan Torah, Shinaseb is Matan Torah. First of all, there was the whole novelty of the giving of the Torah. Never been such a thing like that before. Never what happened afterwards. Totally new thing in the world that God himself gave the Torah. That happened in Mount Sinai. That's one new thing. Number two, it touches a practice of Mount Torah, but call Yom. And also at Mount Torah was given the power to see that the Torah is brand new every day. This is Nimshach B'Yitchadjut Kalalit in the time of Matan Torah. Avul, but me had gashat and yan the Matan Torah be Shabbat. But what about the Shabbat that comes after Matan Torah? Here the main emphasis, and especially in the Parsha of the Shavua, Nasoi means lifting up. And in Pirki Avot, if we remember, we learned before that he said, look at it that the world is based on three things, Torah, Bavodah, Bavimilat, Chasadim. From this, from the Shabbat, after Matan Torah, which implied the Shabbat, this Shabbat has an additional novelty in both aspects. First of all, we read in it, Nasayed Rosh, means lifting up the head. Be'erich l'shlemot yitchach of Matan Torah. When God gave the Torah, the Torah's understanding, he elevated the head of the Jewish people. Can't be anything higher than that. He says, yeah, that's what you think. After Matan Torah, we read Parshas Nasa, which means an additional elevation of the head. Nasa means to lift up. Number two, the Ajah Matchil in Odapam, Moshe Kibal Torah Misina, Matan Torah Chadash. We begin. Again, by saying Moses received the Torah. In other words, a new type of a Torah, even regard, a new aspect of the Torah, even in regard to what was on Mount Sinai. If so, we have Parsha's Nasa, it means that we get elevated even higher than we were on Shavuot. And we say Moshe Kibbal Torah Misena means there was a giving of the Torah in addition to what we received at Mount Sinai. That happens on part. This is Nasai, says the Rebbe. We have to understand what could possibly be this new elevation and this new addition more than the giving of the Torah. Shinit Chadjo, that was in the Shabbos that's after Mount Torah, that in general. All we're just doing is just reminding the things of the giving of the Torah. And was, what's the Rebbe saying over here? What's the nature of a person? People, generally speaking, don't like the change. People don't like the change. They don't want the, they, they want to find some sort of a stability, some sort of a normalness in their life. That's what the, I told you that story about this fellow. I, I heard his name was Moshe Cohen, or Yaakov Cohen. Somebody told me that he was... He interviewed the, uh, the Rebbe. And because the people in, in Israel, they were very afraid in the, of, of the Rebbe. They didn't understand what was this. Here's this man, Jewish man outside of Israel. And Israel is supposed to be a Jewish state. 
And there's this person outside of Israel that claims to be the representative of all the Jewish people. And he's giving out these orders, and telling people what to do all over. And the, and the people in Israel, they were really afraid of this. A lot of them had really basically no idea what Judaism is even about and, and even what a Jew is. Except for the fact that Hitler was, was uh, you know, trying to kill all of them. They had no idea what was going on what a Jew is. This is express, especially stressed by like the Jews in France, the, the French, they had a different idea of how to get rid of the Jews, to be nice to them, and then the Jews would assimilate. And it worked in France, it worked to a very great degree. And Hitler came along and all of a sudden woke everybody up. What a Jew is, a Jew, a Jew, a Jew, a Jew, a Jew. But they didn't exactly know what it was. I mean, pe people sort of thought maybe being a Jew is like really a bad thing. People sort of wanted to forget about their Judaism. But Hitler and these people, they didn't let them. The Dreyfus sort of was... Uh... <clears throat> okay, so they went to the invest... They, 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 the, one of them, anyway, he got an, an outer audience with the Rebbe. And he came out and he said that I've interviewed a lot of people and he said, the Rebbe is three times as crazy as anybody that I've ever interviewed. That's what he said. The Rebbe is three times as crazy as anyone that I interviewed. There's more details to the story, but it's not important. Three times crazier than anyone that I've ever in interrogated. Or... In other words, what, is, what did he mean? That there's really nothing to, nothing to worry about. That's what he said. There's nothing to worry about. This is something that's just totally not... It's not really relevant. To, it's, it's crazy. Now, what does the Rebbe want? The Rebbe wants that we should be brand new every day with the Torah. The Torah should renew us and renew the creation every day. That's crazy. That's a crazy idea. I mean, the Torah for, you know, who, what, what percentage of the Jews, I don't know, is just a book in the library. You know, and even the religious Jews, they think the Torah is like the key to going to heaven. Or it's to give us a better life, or to give us the, the true life. It's the way of truth. The Torah is a tool that you're going to take over the whole world with? The Torah? What in the world is in the Torah that's going to take over the whole world? What is there there? Right? Communism could take over the world. Fascism would take over the world. What is Torah going to take over the whole world? What, what is there there? What are you driving for? What are you going to get out of it? Right? What, what's the point? <clears throat> So the answer is this, it's crazy. It makes no sense, but that's the fact. Like we say every day in, in uh, Aleinu, Yakiru v'yedu ko'ish ve'tevel. The first crazy person like this was Abraham. Abraham started this crazy idea. Abraham was called Av Hamon Goyim. He was called the father of all nations. Rashi says, of all of mankind. Abraham really believed that God is creating everybody and he just wanted everybody to, to feel it. But it's pretty simple. And the only way you can do it, to feel it, after you do have this feeling, so what do you do? You just go about your business and do whatever you want? He says, no, then people have to change themselves. They have to do what the Creator wants them to do. This is a crazy idea. Therefore, Abraham was called Avram Ivri. He was called, he was on one side, Abraham, and the whole world was on the other side. But now, okay, now we're in the generation of Mashiach. This is what the Rebbe wants us to do. To actually, to begin to complete what Abraham wanted, to start feeling the point that Abraham wanted to get across to the world, that the world is brand new all the time and God is creating it. And it happens by means of the Torah. And the Torah is also brand new. And that means we have to be brand new. We have to be constantly renovating ourselves, rejuvenating ourselves. Dalit. We'll learn one more and then I'll give you a story. Dalit. We can see this in the Indian Nosef, in the novelty of the Matan Torah, the novelty of the Torah. What? In the Torah itself. You do, it's known that even in Matan Torah, in the Torah, when God gave the Torah, He gave everything that was going to be revealed in the Torah. Not only the Ten Commandments, Elagam Kulo. When God gave the Torah contained in the Ten Commandments, were all of the whole entire Torah. And with all the 
explanations, even if you want to say the Jews had to wait until the second tablets were given, but nevertheless, when the Torah was given, was given all of the whole Torah, including all of the explanations that would be given in the future. Kolel gam inyani Torah shenit galu, including all of the Torah that's going to be revealed in all of the generations until our generation. All of the novel ideas that were going to be written by all of the explainers of the Torah. Right, all what's called the Rishonim and the Acheronim. Thousands, hundreds, thousands, millions of books, genius ideas were given. Afilo Masha Talmud Vatik Atid Lachadesh, even what a expert pupil would innovate, was said to Moshe Bissina. Everything was said to Moshe Bissina. Like, just take a simple example, right? How long is the Torah been around 3,332 years. How long has electricity been around? I don't know, 100 years, 200 years, something like that. <clears throat> right, it's been available to people, I don't know, some 100 something years. Not that long, electricity. No, is electricity fire or not? It says you can't light a fire on, your, on Shabbat. Is electricity fire or is it not fire? I mean, Moses could not have possibly known this. There was no electricity back then, right? This is wrong. Everything that was given, that will be given in the Torah, every idea, every argument, every point of view that's valid, was given to Moshe and Sinai. I imagine also the, val the invalid ideas were also given. <laughs> they say that the Lubavitcher Rebbe had a, he's got a library, his own personal library. They say it has the biggest collection of non-religious Jewish books in the world. That's what I heard. All these books by Shabbat Tzvi and all these other weird, you know, Reform Jews and conservatives, all these crazy ideas, of the tzedukim and the this, who knows? They're all there. So in other words, everything was given to Moshe on Sinai. But here it says that all the proper true ideas and all the true proper arguments were given to Moshe on Mount Sinai. Harizeh bo'ov and Shemat and Torah nitnu be'ikr kloli Torah. The, how was it? Why did anybody have to renew or discover these ideas afterwards? It was all given in Mount Sinai, right? It says, no, the Torah was given in a general way. And from this general way, it was revealed all the details. Until it was revealed. In the future, it's not so hard to understand. Now we have a chip, you have a, what is it, a disk on key. All these other ways, a little thing that has absolutely no quality to it, no, it's a little piece of metal. You put it into the machine, all of a sudden you see wonderful ideas with nature, with, 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 with wisdom, a little tiny chip. The same thing as when the Torah was given, it was given in a very concentrated way, and little by little it became revealed what's on this chip. This is, re this is the novelty of the Torah, to the point that a person makes this new idea, it's called on his name. Neymar b'shem Omro. Oh, and also, and this is the main thing, that in Matan Torah was given, all of the Torah that's going to be, even the Torah that's going to be revealed in the future. The ideas that only Mashiach will reveal. She Yilmar, it says Torah, the Mashiach will teach all the people. Because Matan Torah, this is only, happened only one time. There'll never be again Matan Torah. The Torah was only given once. <clears throat> but all of these things, these ideas in the Torah were concealed. And they were concealed so much that the revelation in the future will come in a way of a, it'll be called a new Torah. These new ideas will pop out from the Torah that was not revealed in the time when Moshe Rabbeinu got the Torah, but only <clears throat> by means of Hashem himself. Torah me'iti teitzei. God will reveal new ideas of the Torah that weren't there, new secrets, new uh, motivations in putting on tefillin and doing all the commandments. Shehi be'en aroch, this is totally incomparable to the Torah that was revealed now by means of, that we have now. Like it says, a person that learns now, the Torah we learn now is called hevel, it's like wind in comparison to the Torah of the Mashiach. By means of the Chirush Torah, by means of the novelty of the Torah that's going to be in the future, there'll also be a new world. 
Hashemayim chadashim v'aretz chadasha. It says the heavens will be new and the earth will be new. Shani Yoseh. The world will scream out godliness. That's the idea of the future redemption. Kolomer, in other words, in addition to the fact that that there will be a novelty in the Torah, like it was when the Torah was given, and also in every day, which means that that same thing will feel brand new, like a new honeymoon. It's called the, the day that God gave the Torah to the Jews. It's called God's marriage day. Yom Chatunuto. So it'll be a renewed, a renewed marriage. The marriage will be, in addition to that, yesh no gami and chiddush. There'll be something totally new. The Torah of the Mashiach will be something totally new, and that was also contained in the Torah. Something will be revealed. A whole new dimension of the Torah that was not revealed up to now, whether in the Torah and also in the world. What is this thing that will be revealed? We'll learn about it, God willing, tomorrow.